So it is the 10th of July. Seems like we've been gone forever, huh? And um, it is Breakfast with the Masters. We're going to get back to work. A um, couple people are stepping up. Uh, glad, glad what's over? The, the holiday? Yep, recording's on. Um, uh, a couple of people yet last night out of the blue, which is kind of nice, have stepped up and decided to take mentoring, so that's good. Hopefully, uh, I know people in mentoring enjoy enjoy the work, uh, a lot more homework, but we get to look at your trading through your eyes instead of looking at my trading through my eyes, so it's a good experience. Um, I'm in the f in, in the flurry of working with Kevin, trying to get everything <coughs> built, all the presentations built that I want, because we're going to do not only um, presentations on on Ensign and on slides, but we're also going to do some physical presentations in September, some some physics things that are physical. I'm going to steal directly from Dr. Feynman, or, and also Penn and Teller, and. Um, just because you tend to remember things like that. And then, um, as I said, some new people in mentoring and some new people up here with breakfast. So, um, exciting second, I guess this is the beginning of the second half of the year, huh? So we're starting out the second half of the year nice. Um, summer is actually kind of, we're, we're in the middle of monsoon here in Arizona, which means summer is kind of passing us by. I know that sounds weird for the Midwest. Summer's just coming into swing, but you know we're in we're in rain clouds through August now. So um, the hot weather has come and gone, and um, it was only in the 70s yesterday after being in the high 90s, and um, now we expect rain a couple times a week now here. So yeah, Arizona in Colorado's cold and rainy. Yeah, so I'm out practicing my bow, getting ready for bow season. And uh, hopefully my uh, my feet will allow me to hit the trails in the fall and get some get some venison and maybe some elk. That'd be nice. So, okay. So today, again, you have to remember the foundation material. I'd love to, Perry. Um, we need to talk the fun. We need to think about the foundation material. But today. I'm going to, we're going to continue with crude just because um, we want to bridge it to last month and probably we'll cut it off here at some point. But I just, I continue to trade it to the end of the month. But I'll continue right where we left off because it's got a very prescient or important discussion that all of us need to be aware of. Um, and we'll be looking at two trades today. Shouldn't take too long. Uh, the discussion may may be interesting, more interesting, and smooth and rounded. How many of you use a trade plan every time you trade? Every single time. Just be honest. So I know most of you don't. Okay. Now. It should be on your desk. Well, a lot more than your stop entry target. I mean the whole trade plan. Yeah. What am I doing? Why am I trying to do it? Where is it going? Where am I going to have trouble? When am I going to go to break even? Because in that moment when you falter, you can just... I like it in writing in my hand because you can pick it up and read through it and go, okay, I got this. Yeah, because otherwise you'll be battling impulse, right? You need sandpaper to my, myself to become smooth and rounded. Well, Gina, I'll bring you some. So, everybody, listen. Well, you need to have it to those details, Robbie. You're going to see me I don't know if I fumbled this first trade, but you're going to see me certainly have a lack of commitment. How about that? And um, we'll see how that works out for me. 
Um, I did a big long rung, so that's that's not that unusual. Um, and then the second the second trade has just has an important an extreme. It's it has nothing to do with the outcome of the trade, but it has an extremely important lesson. So let's 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 get into these and uh, see if they can make some sense. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay. So we're in good shape. So does this look vaguely familiar? I was long and falling asleep when left when last we left, and then all of a sudden the fresh buyers came out of nowhere, and it went vertical. Anybody remember this? The graybeards were like, hey, wake up, buddy. Just about time to go to bed. And the graybeards were like, hey, wake up. You might want to take a look at this before you go to bed. And I said, well, it, hey, I got my profit target up here, so I'm going to bed. So just take care of biz. That's one of the nice things I have. But, you know, you guys can also leave OCOs, um, you know, orders that are connected to each other, um, and just you know just measure it up here and say you know seven bars while I sleep so that would give me X and just put it up there along with your stop right yeah typical crude out of nowhere I don't know I don't know why it jumped I don't care but all you know just when I wasn't paying attention all of a sudden and I was bored to death look at it it wasn't that I didn't have money in the trade but I was bored to death and then all of a sudden it starts to take off so um, you always have to be prepared you always got to have your risk control in the market you always need to have a profit target in the market watch what happens remember I don't know if you remember the end of this trade but um, I'm sleeping now I'm a, yeah it's uh, I mean I'm asleep sleep right now the alarm hasn't gone off and the alarm is just going off right now and so I'm fumbling around I use my my uh, Samsung note now to wake me up and so I'm fumbling on trying not to knock it off and wake my wife up at three o'clock in the morning turning it off I'm getting the bathroom right now because these are two minute bars at three in the morning so you tell those people are, are in a frenzy and so I told Michael head of the graybeards I don't care if it's at this is a price cluster line here but really what I'm looking at is this this is what we got in on this was a line of maximum excursion reflected to the upside either line of maximum excursion or the horizontal the further we get to the right of course the more likely I would be to take it at the horizontal but he's at a point now where he could take it either one so I'm coming out of the bathroom they're taking profit I'm going hey what's going on they're too busy to talk to me and it, I mean it doesn't matter and of course I see that that and literally I've only been in the trading room for four minutes I see this bar and I'm like Jesus Christ did you guys get out what's going on and I blinked and it's down here and you know like don't hey relax we're just getting the average you're out because I had full boat on here so but they did they did manage me get, to get me out in the futures market and the cash market um, but if I didn't have orders in look at it I'd now be 60 points from the top 50 points from the top trying to figure out how to manage this trade right and these swings have been only about 840 bucks on average in the swing that you could capture so if you've already given away five hundred dollars of it you know it's not a great way to start the morning right so glad i got it not sure what i'm going to do now This is one of those where we talked about having orders in the market and, the, and doing everything the same way every time. If you didn't have your orders in the market, you'd now be sitting on, you know, instead of eight or nine hundred bucks or whatever this one, I, didn't, I don't even care what this, but if it was typical, eight hundred and forty bucks, you'd now be sitting on two hundred and fifty, three hundred dollars and squirming, right? Please turn around, please turn around. I need this money. Okay, so. Not a good, not a good day for hoping for it to come back up. Okay, it's now you know breakfast time and more, and it hasn't recovered at all. So if you didn't get out up there, you have a real quandary going on. 
So I'm watching, got my money out. I'm watching. I'm happy. That's fine. It's kind of how the month has gone so far. In the right place, in the right time. Have the orders in. Haven't even left that much money on the table, which is kind of, kind of nice. But we're leaving lower highs and lower lows. Retesting the low. We're looking for a low right now. Remember the looking for highs, looking for lows, looking for highs, looking for lows as we box in action. If you haven't done that exercise in a while, go back and box in action. It will help you figure out where the swings are. You can see it testing, testing, testing this bottom and blow through the bottom so it's leaving new swing lows, swing highs. Okay, so now it's prime time New York. It's 9 o'clock, right? Is having orders in the market a different strategy to the trailing stops approach that you should previously see, or is it the second side of the same coin? Robbie, I generally have some master, you know, reach for the sky order in, especially at night. I have a luxury that most of you don't. I can actually say to the Greybeards, you know, we've or we've already got a hundred cents locked in this. We got a thousand dollars locked in on this. You can just go ahead and just keep moving the profit stop up underneath the next swing as it makes a new swing. And sometimes I'll do that, but for the most part, I'll have a profit target, an ultimate profit target in. You'll, Robbie, you'll see, and you saw on that one, there were, there were multiple possibilities. I gave them discretion. You'll see in the second trade, human trailing stop. Yeah, but most of you are stuck with a broker. You have to be at the desk to change the stop. Although, I, I take, I'm sure that, I know there are a couple programs that you can kind of sort of teach them what a, what a swing is and how to be behind a swing, but it doesn't quite work as well as having somebody watch it, but um, you do the best with what you have, but you have to have some way to protect your profits, some way to protect your capital, okay? So as we come down here in prime time, it's now sold off a uh, hundred cents. And what did we say the average swing was? 840, right? 820, 840. So it's, you know, it's in the prime area, right? And it's New York prime. Your antenna ought to be up. I'm not telling you to look for a turn. I'm just telling you, you know, um, it's sold off nicely and it's prime time New York. Um, for me, it's been the only, pretty much, I mean, I've probably taken two bond trades and maybe one currency trade, but for the most part, in terms of uh, intraday or shorter term trades, it's really just been crude because that was kind of my charter for June for you guys. So I'm watching this religiously in the time that I have to trade. Um, it's kind of my, you know, my antenna's up. It's New York time. I'm looking for something um, that tells me, hey, pay attention. What's the first thing I notice? Take a look at the chart in front of you. Yeah, can you see the clustering? We talked a lot about that the last time we met. I don't, I don't even know the last. Anybody tell me the last time we met? Was it before the 1st of July? Did we meet in July? 29th of June. It's been forever. So, we we talked a lot about price clustering. This the the close, the open, the close, the open, the close. They're all the same price. Okay, people are doing. I mean, the, the bars are kind of slowing down as well, but people have no opinion about this. Okay, is clustering just a heads up to watch? Um, well, watch what I do with it, Gina. So it's the first thing I notice is A, the volatility is tamping down, and B, I see the 
price clusters here. Okay? And I'm not I'm not actively stocking a trade. I'm just trying to get in tune with the market and then I mean one bar can for me can make the, all the difference in the world. So I'm watching and when I see let's let's go through it again. Price clusters, double bottoms, we start to pull ahead a little bit. See it? Now we close with really nice separation. So it looks like a higher low. So the first thing I do is I go, here's, here's 10 ticks of noise. So if I was going to enter this, my stop has to be at least as low as 10 ticks of noise. My going to go is 25 points. I understand that the ATR is 10. I had somebody in mentoring again this week using baby ATRs, and all you're going to do is feed the, feed the monkeys. Yeah, your guppy food. Cheap stops are the fastest way to lose money short of losing using no stops but that's a cheap way to use just to lose your whole account but cheap stops are not cheap okay so and I've showed you a couple trades here where people said you know I think I'd only use 20 and of course neither neither one of those trades worked out for some reason this is and I got to it by experiment experimentation you know just looking at swings so as as if price is coming down and you're short and you're hiding over top, the pullbacks, how big of a go-no-go -no -go do you need to survive 80% of the pullbacks? That's how you get the right size go-no-go. -no -go, okay, it's more than just the ATR. It's, I mean, a quick and dirty one is a minimum of one and a third, but in something as volatile as oil, it's actually two and almost two and a third. So it can make a big difference. If you find that you're getting stopped out two or three times by two ticks, that means you should probably expand your go no go by five. Right? Of course that hurts when you're wrong. It hurts when you're right too. It hurts you know it hurts to be right and be stopped out two two times in a row by two ticks. It it sucks. But that is trading. Okay, so what I see, Gina, is literally the compression of price. I see these price clusters, and then I see a movement away from the lows and separation. See it? Now, remember, going into this trade, I have, I don't know, 50, I don't know. 54, 56 stops sitting in the bank halfway through the month. So I'm not going to have a losing month. I know it, I know crude is in the area where it may turn. Now it's starting to show me signs that it may turn. This is what I've been seeing all month. So I'm aggressive. I'm willing to take this trade and notice I'm going to put it a tick. I don't have a stop yet. Yeah, I do below these clusters. Is it a classic stop? No, but the price clusters, the price clusters are where people have been accumulating and the double bottoms. So when we get separation, I'm going to take this as a stop, Aaron. Um, is this is this classic stops? Nope. It's not. Should you use them? You should take a look and see if you can see these clusters. See the pull away from the bottom and see. Remember, I'm, I'm basically even half of this go, no, go underneath this low. Try it on SIM and see if it works for you.
if it doesn't work for you then stay away from it it's got to do with prime time and it also it ran it ran about one swing size down right well yeah we it's that's right it's prime time New York and then on top of that it's also showing signs of price compression price clustering it's pulling away from a bottom I'm willing to put a stop on this one one stop has some reminiscences of floor trading um, if you say so I I don't I don't rem Kai, I can tell you that I don't remember floor trading at all like this I remember floor trading is I'll bet you it's going to snow more than an inch today. That's what most of my floor trading experience was like. Putting gum on the floor where you know the guy next to you is going to tap his foot. Um, not that they weren't good traders, but this is more clinical than most floor traders. But that that's just what I remember. Floor traders trade for a tick, says Johnny. Yeah, it's more what I remember them, but okay. Pete, yeah, Pete, Pete would agree with that statement. All right, so let's see what how this works. Get filled, but not by much, and I don't get the whole fund in. But then there's plenty of time. And in fact, I could still buy more, so could pretty much get all we wanted. And you might ask the question, is this lifting off because we're buying? Maybe. Don't know. Can't answer the question. I can't do things in a vacuum, so I can't answer the question. But when I see this, see if I can grab it. Obviously, it's some vindication. So it looks like higher low higher low good separation followed by good separation followed by even better separation if you weren't in now of course you'd be maybe you didn't like Gina maybe you didn't like it till now so now you'd be you could leave orders in the same area right you like it better now Gina so let's leave orders there and see if you would have gotten filled So the price of confirmation, okay, Amanda, uh, the price of confirmation can be painful. I mean, you want something, but something always costs something, okay? If you don't get anything for free, and you can see that this thing has just begun to march higher, period. So that idea is now dead. And I would say at this point, now that you've taken out this high right here, can you all see that? If you're not filled, this trade idea is dead. Do you agree? Now, I had somebody in mentoring yesterday that said that they've basically been catching all the secondary trades and I think they only had one winner on secondary trades. And I went back and afterwards um, and took a look at the secondary entries in June. So we're up, I don't know, 56 stops or whatever. The secondaries were not particularly kind in crude. Would, be, would, would this be those kind of trades that you get in early and it turns out to be a circular spiral? It will come back to your entry price 80% of the time. Um... I have not seen that that much Ouija and crude. That secondary pop. When price gets compressed at lows, I want to be all over it, but I would get fired. Well, I got a couple things going on, Johnny. I get price compressed, but I also get that price cluster open high, open close, open close at the same price. And of course, I'm in the area where that's the average swing, right? So, and and frankly, I got a lot of stops sitting in the bank. So, at prime time New York. So, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of reasons for me to be a little aggressive. But um, 
so we I haven't seen that those secondary entries um, un unless they're in the same area those secondary entries have not worked out as well because but if you try to get in for example here in a pullback price has to go so far to get you out of the way of price action the nice thing about being in down here is now we've got all we've probably got near let's take a look we've probably got getting close to well we're at one to one I guess I'm kidding myself we're at one to one so we're not ready to go to break even right But we want to get out of the way and get to break even. So let's take a look. I want to get up to this area and get to break even. And what I'd really like to do, um, let's just do it the easy way. What I'd, what I'd really like to do, Nikolai asked, okay, so what's the plan? I'm going to make this quick and dirty for Nikolai. So I'd like to basically just double that range. That's it. Simple. Um, I'm surprised I would think I would think to expect a higher low from here. That is just the first swing high of the way down. Okay, I'm surprised I would think to expect a higher low from here. Yeah, a high, okay. Uh, Scotty, explain what you're, I don't, I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. Maybe I'm just slow. Um, we just said if we took the trade and if it gets into two to one and it comes back into our entry price, would you advise us to go to break even? Uh, Ouija, if we get to two to one up here, I'm going to go to break even. Aaron says, what's the difference in this trade and the ones where you want to see highs broken before entering? Sometimes you said you like to see two. Um, no, Aaron, I don't really like. I don't really like to trade that far into the swing. OK, so you're mixing and matching what I'm talking about in terms of two swings back for stops. So I'm not going to wait for this line to get taken out before I think about entering. Because by here, I want to be going to break even. I've given away far too much of the trade at this point. Would most of you agree that I'm, I'm being honest in what I, when I say this? It's very unusual that I'll trade over here Aaron uh, I had one I think uh, second or third to the last session and somebody said they were very surprised that I was trading that la that late in a move I think this is a boom boom trade but it's repeatable says Ouija um, I'm pretty close to the bone on this one I, I would agree with you and that's not the point of this trade Ouija you'll see the point of this trade and and um, but I'm I'm going to show I'm showing every trade in this um, series, but that every trade has a reason to be shown. Do you see the clusters up higher as being resistance or contextually support? Uh, what clusters here? Um, I don't really. They're really airy fairy. Um, they got broken. They're meaningless. They're not. They're only about 500 bucks, so I expect price to expend to extend further. Um, first of all, and second of all, um, you know I didn't get price clusters, and then bottoming. What I got was price clusters and immediate new lows. Here I got price clusters, bottoming, and a turn. Kai says they have no interest in context. So. Trying to make sure I only use them in the right spots. Okay, well, it'll take some practice. Okay, but what I have down here is I have price clusters, I have bottoming, then I start to pull away, and it's also the context of the the minimum swing, right? And it's also, frankly, prime time New York. I'm probably not going to be this aggressive at 2:30 in the afternoon. 
this is this is not a four out of five easy to spot at four, at two thirty in the afternoon I'm likely to take three point five and fours because I'm not that hungry to have something overnight and it's unlikely to hit my target profit before I walk out of the trading room at four thirty so context is kind of important so if we get up in one of our other classes I think I recall them being used as secondary entries which clusters uh, not up here go back and look at the la at the tapes that are up and Go back and look at the tape, and then you can tell us on uh, on Monday if you can find. If price pulled back to going to go after taking out the first high, would it be tradable? After taking out this high right here, how you doing, Paul? Right, this high right here? Sure. I'd still have my order in. But if we took out this high, I, I, don't, I would, I'm going to go at break even here. So as, as far as I'm concerned, the trade has matured far enough that it should never come back here now. But here... This is only one to one, so so Gina, I would still I'd I'd still be ticking along here. I don't see any other it's not like I would use that for a stop or this for a stop. I'd still be sitting here. But I'd you know, if you want to go ahead and follow it, that's fine. So let's see what happens. So we make a high, close on our high. And immediately get a headstander. And we had uh, just basically we had 260 bucks in this trade at that point, just so you know. And uh, try and go higher. And now you can see we had a nice thrust up. We haven't had a pullback at all. And now we're starting to widen out. See that? I'm not at break even yet. Break even is going to come up there. So Gina, you want to get in at this level? That's fine. Now look what we get. Here's entry. This is pretty. You might be able to take this one, Gina. Let's make this. And that's fine. Let's make this uh, solid. So if you were looking for an entry, Gina, entering here after seeing this bar, let's see what that buys you. That is pretty darn close. Might have worked. So let's see. Let, let let's see what let's see if you saw this, Gina, and it pulls down and then gives you a, you know a reasonable no this is this is nowhere near five hundred dollars three hundred and fifty bucks so Johnny the the big pullbacks have been five fifty this is three fifty and Gina said I probably wouldn't have had a resting order but now say you see this separation on this bar Gina Maybe you would have said, you know, maybe that's enough for me. You would think you were chasing it, so that's still not enough. Well, if anybody wants the secondary entry, I think this is probably it. I don't know if you're going to get filled, but and you can see it. And this looks like a higher low, and it acts like a higher low. And so I, I suppose you could have had a, I'll just put in a bar, the, the minimum amount that I can afford in here, that could be a C point. Maybe it gives us a median line train. Okay. Well, in fact, it turns out to be a C point, and it looks like this. I mentioned this in, to somebody in mentoring yesterday. I think out of all of these trades, there are only two median line trades. Otherwise, crude moved away faster than a median line, faster than a speeding median line. Um, all the entries were basically on structure so 
I'd be trying to get in there a more realistic entry for me. Okay, the the problem is, however, um, you know, where you know, where's it going to let you in? So let's let's take a look. So maybe this is the area, Matt cubed. Now you got separation. So let's see what that does for you. So here's your separation. It's within four bars. So now you're in with a stop underneath C. That work for you, Matt? Matt says too high up the run. Aaron says he likes that one. All right, so we'll leave this one in as a maybe. And we'll see what the difficulties are in crude trading here versus trading down here. Okay? The problem is that is basically this. Remember the average swing length, right? Um, so that you just you just gave up two hundred bucks for that entry, right? So out of eight hundred forty bucks, you gave up two hundred. So if it only goes eight forty, you can't get the three to one. No way in hell. Which is that's that sucks. But but some of them go further, and you can certainly do trailing stops. So let's let's see how this one would play out. We'll follow both of them. So you can see us start to cluster higher lows. Here's a higher low, higher low, higher low. We still haven't taken out two to one, which is basically at B. And let's take a look and see if this does it. All right, so here's one to one. We still haven't taken out two to one. Note that I put in a new line of maximum excursion. We'll leave it compressed a little bit while we follow. And um, I took this line of maximum excursion from this low to this is the first pullback. It's my favorite line of maximum excursion right here. First thrust up, first pullback. See it? Always the most interesting for one, me for one. Always one that I'm likely to lean on. I put it up here. Now watch price. Is outside the median line. It would be the shift line, yeah, in this case, Gina. It would be AC. That is correct. That's actually where the idea came from, is that the AC line is really an important... It, it actually carries a lot of the mathematics forward that a typical median line does. So I've got that marked up here. Uh, it's a reflection of this down here. Now note that the median line itself, we have we could shift it, but of course, here I'll show you. We've already got it reflected. In our lines of maximum excursion, right? Right? So we've got the shift sitting in front of us. There's no reason to change the median line. Okay, so as we, as we watch, you can see price starting to widen out or gentle, right? The, the traditional median line's not working. So if you don't have those lines of maximum surgeon, the first thing you should do is turn this into a modified shift, which is the same as putting in this first pullback line of maximum excursion. So this one is it's kind of like Shane's flung. It's had an impulse up, now it's going to slow down. So when we take out, when we get back inside the median line, which is a sign of strength, right? I'm going to actually put in a profit stop 
this thing is this is what I this is what I wrote this thing congested awful early oil has moved away from my entry pretty fast on all these trades this one just seemed to clump up as soon as I got in it just seemed to just go horizontal and now it's finally starting to sprint so I expect that it's going to continue higher here otherwise if it's just going to sit in this mess it doesn't look like the rest of the trades that have been successful for the for the early part of the month um, and I didn't make that observation until price got back inside the median line so in a certain sense I'm watching the logic of the market okay and I make a decision you following me right or wrong so all right so I write it in and then I put my order in the market this is also what you mean by surgical money management. Uh, what we'll see, Ouija. Johnny says, I'm out. <laughs> uh, Johnny, it's not three to one. It's not even two to one. So if you're out, you're fired. Has it gone to two one? Let's find out. If you're not playing for three to one, Johnny, you don't get to play. So let's see. All right, so that's two to one right there. So it's gone two to one, but it's just gone two to one. That's it, right? That's all it's done. And if you're at the secondary entrance, So the median line trade, you're at three. You're risking two fifty to make three fifty right now. Okay. All right. So let's let's follow this through. So you can. This is the logic that I wrote. It didn't really take off. It had one very minor push up and now it's it seemed to be going horizontal so now it looks like it's taking off I expect it to take off here right if it's not taking off I'm not really sure that I have the time of day for this maybe I maybe I, maybe I was anticipating something that wasn't going to happen make sense we'll come back to this Okay, it goes directly up to the line of maximum excursion, turns on a dime. I was expecting an elliptical spiral, that's right. I was expecting going from circular to elliptical. And just when I thought it went elliptical, okay, I'm all excited. And then can't stay above the reaction line and now trading below the upper median line. Looks more circular to me than it does elliptical doesn't it so I'm expecting let's do this the easy way I'm not expecting this see it I was expecting instead at this point that we were going to do that just clustered higher I don't know how to you get the idea push that higher but so it's not at the moment it doesn't it's not exhibiting anything other than circular momentum and that's not going to help me so as it pulls back I'm not exactly a happy camper and I kind of wonder was I seeing things here and am I going to get stuck in a mess? Now, think about the problem you'd have if you were in here. You can't even go to break even yet. You're not at 2 to 1. And my profit stop is at your entry. So by trading off and entering at the secondary entry, 
you have less money management options available to you. Everybody understand that? That's the price you pay for waiting for confirmation or just seeing a trade later is you have less options. Your hands are tied. I can get to break even. You may be stuck with a loss. Not sure why the profit stop can't be the same as yours. Um, well, it's yours is break. Mine is a profit stop. Yours is a break even. Aaron, can you see that? But you've only you've only gone three hundred and fifty dollars. Well, you can if you want, but that's awful close to the action. So Aaron says, why can't I go to break even based on structure? You can go to break even anytime you want. But remember, the closer you go to break even without taking out structure, some structure, the more likely you're just going to enter and then get out and enter and get out and then enter and get out. So, no, I wouldn't be it. If I took the secondary entry, I wouldn't be at break even. But I, do, I don't find this particularly inspiring. I wouldn't be entering here. I, I, it still looks circular to me. It's not until this starts to happen that I start to feel like maybe it's starting to lift off, right? But Aaron, you could do it. You're just going to go through a lot of break-evens. And if you can muster up the the personal discipline um, we're going to do something how many people are going to Chicago okay we're going to do something in the first set the first Sunday sessions Wednesday Thursday for an hour maybe two you, some of you that have been around a long time have heard me talk about when I used to give uh, live seminars every week at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange with we three 3,500 people through the seminars and every week I would do this I would throw I would say I'll put all the money in my pocket against anybody in the room that I can throw 10 heads or 10 tails in a row within an hour. Remember that? And I always could get to 8. And I never had anybody at 8 I would always say if you want you can pick up your money. And of course they had four or five thousand dollars on the table and I had what my wife would let me take which would probably be forty-five dollars but at eight I'd say okay you're a little nervous if you want you can pick up your money and nobody ever called me on it everybody always picked up their money so I never had to throw for the ninth head or tail but sometimes in 15 minutes sometimes in 45 minutes I'd always be at eight in a row which I know it seems like it's impossible but it's not it's just an aberrant run right well we're gonna do we're not gonna do coins in Chicago we're gonna do something else completely different but it's going to have everything to do with being consistent, patient, playing a game. Um, remember, the stock market, it's not, you're not playing stock market or currencies or commodities. You're not playing against the coin, right? You're playing against the overall action um, of all the other people in these, in these markets it's the the crowd mentality so you you can decide when to bet and when not to bet right make sense so we're going to do something for at least an hour that is going to seem batshit crazy but i will show you that if you just did this We're also going to do the Amos hat hat trick with with actual stovepipe hats. I've procured a pair of 
silk stove pipes that fold the whole shot. We're going to do the Amos trick a couple days, uh, but we're also going to do this. I'm not going to give you any more other than that, but it's going to it's going to be similar to this where you have where you'll understand the consequences of your actions in a multiplayer environment, not a coin. And and how to actually consistently make money of that. Okay? That's a <laughs> I won't be bringing Hobbs, no. I will have bodyguards there, but uh, they but it won't be Hobbs. They'll be humans, courtesy of His Her Majesty. Okay, and no, they, they will fit in. They they not won't be Cubans. No, they'll fit in. You won't even know who they are. Don't worry about it. All right, so let's see how this plays out. So I've made a change you won't be able to hurt me trust me these guys are very good um, I've made a change in my trading plan based on logic wrote it into my wrote it down in my notes a little bit early for me to go and put in a profit stop but I'm a little disappointed that we did not go elliptical okay make sense everybody locked into that one Okay, and you can see me. I noticed we'd gone about 84 ticks from the low to this current high. Is that part of the reason too? Uh, no, we haven't gone 84 ticks, have we? That's 840 bucks. Oh, from the low. Well, let's check. No, well, all right, 775. Um, probably should have been part of my thinking, Ouija. It wasn't. I was just thinking, okay, this thing is finally taking off. Now, when I say 840, I'm talking about, remember, I say that you should be able to get 70 to 80 percent of a swing. So, you know, I expect it to go 1,000, 1,200. But, you know, it's 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 gone a good bit here and should at this point have placed at least my break even out of reach, right? I expect that I will not see my break even now. We've gone far enough that I should not see my break even. This is a second secondary question. Matt said that hit on the reflection line might be a good target. Yeah, but it's not two to one. I mean it's not three to one. That's the problem. It just isn't be nice if it was but it isn't it's a hundred dollars short it is what it is okay so since it didn't take off and it has hit the reflection line and it looked like it was going elliptical I made the decision to put in a profit stop earlier than I normally do in a trade and it's the same as your break even here in a weird way that's a 3D stop also, yes. So let's, so yeah, this is a bit ooky for me. And so far so good. And then we start to see this bar. So now it looks like we're starting to cascade lower, doesn't it? And at the moment, I'm kind of like the frog in, you know, you know I, I think this is a myth, but the frog, you know, in the water that's slowly heating up. I kind of am actually comfortable getting stopped out. You know, go ahead and stop me out here because I don't really like the action. And it'll it'll leave me a little bit of profit, but at least I'm not going to suffer through this if I get stopped out. And, of course, I get stopped out. Now, if you're in here, you're at a tiny, tiny loss, <clears throat> 80 bucks or something like that. So let's see what happens. It goes about 80 bucks against me, against my profit stop. I'm out. Here's break even for me. Never approaches break even. Johnny said I got fired, but got the money. Yeah, but Johnny, that behavior will do nothing but cost you money in the long run. Okay, so 
I have to break you of this habit, and I, I will. Okay. You'll get this money, but in the long term, you're going to lose. You'll be a loser. This is not floor trading. This is screen trading. So two to one is not going to cover it. So in a certain sense, we already said it's six, it's six hundred dollars, and you're risking two fifty. So it doesn't work. So at this point, uh, this let's look at this pullback. This pullback is our five hundred dollar pullback. If I'm not incorrect, five hundred and. It's 500 some bucks. This is our deep pullback that we talk about. So, in a lot of ways, 520 says David, in a lot of ways I should have been expecting this pullback. But this area, again, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hypnotized. I'm thinking, you know what, I'm kind of glad to be out of this trade. It's not doing what I think. So let's follow it through maybe you would have managed it differently Matt says yep you might wanted to leave a profit stop giving yourself a $500 pullback chance so now it's back to prior highs new line of maximum excursion on this pullback reflected up here after getting stopped out did you look at the chart on the same day oh I'm still trading Ouija I'm still watching um, uh, at actually, in point of fact, at this point, I'm, I think I'm working with uh, <coughs> Kevin on some IT stuff, but I'm in the trading room. And again, same thing as the prior night. Just when you think it's safe. The thing starts to go vertical. Now I'm out. Maybe you stayed in. Okay, you, you never would have gotten stopped out. If you didn't go to break even, you'd still be in. Would you only be looking at this chart, Tim, or scanning a few other charts at the same time? Robbie, in, in a normal month, I'd be scanning a bunch of other charts, but you know, five markets. But this month, I told I told you I started out the month with the idea of trading every swing in oil, so I'm pretty much just trading oil. I think I've made three other trades other than oil for all of June, which is unusual. So this looks like a rolling chop to me. Is that a legitimate observation? Um, it's more congested than a rolling chop. This part is a rolling chop, but it this whole thing is more congested. It's just until this happens, it's just a it's just basically it's basing. It's never taken out the lows where I got in. It never would have stopped me out. If I had just stuck with the original plan of going to break even at two to one and done nothing other than that, which is normally what I do until it lifts off, I'd still be in this trade. So, <clears throat> wet feet here. This is not typical for me. Um, nothing wrong with it. The sitting is difficult, says Gina. Well, it certainly got to me this day and I wrote in my trading plan you know I'm making I'm definitely making a change here uh, for good or for bad and is that what you had in mind when you mentioned being a day session that you didn't commit to the trade yeah Nikolai I think I was um, there's no better way for me to say this I was pretty half-assed about this trade if you're going to be that aggressive with the entry, um, I think the entire trade needs needs to be, you know, like ballet, one, two, three. There's no room for um, sidesteps in here. You have to stick with your aggressive plan, and I didn't. When critiquing this trade, you were disappointed with your decision to go to the profit stop. Yeah, Amanda, there was no reason for me to do that. This was an extremely aggressive entry. I should be 
as aggressive in managing the trade. And instead, um, I was kind of lackadaisical about it. So, all right. So now it now it's going. Looks like it's going elliptical, and I should be in this trade, right? This is what I was paying for. I would prefer to have stayed at break even. Absolutely, Robbie. I should have stayed it. It's I'm not very focused. I agree, Amanda. Now, again, that could come from lots of trades in a row in the same market. Um, it could. It, would, it could come from a lot of things, but this to me is a, for me, this is a blunder. Not proud of it, but is what it is. I think I took a hundred dollars out of this trade, but watch what the two, watch what happens with the trade. So if I'd stuck with my original plan, it looks like it's starting to go elliptical. Okay. It's more volatile. That's definitely sure. Right. But it's leaving higher highs and higher lows. <coughs> okay, it's now. I'm asleep. It's now just about time to get up. Now I've been up for about 45 minutes, and I certainly wouldn't be thinking about getting in here after fumbling around down here. And of course, just about the time I'm becoming lucid, what does it do? It starts to go elliptical again price starts to go vertical this is elliptical so we've got all this energy stored up and now it's starting to take off and I'm, I'm not going to enter here or here after profit stopping myself out here I'm just not and especially at this time of the morning right well this afternoon or now when I finally wake up uh, here I'm just not interested in trading looking and waiting for a short well I'm looking for the market to go horizontal and all it's done basically is slowly made its way higher so you're either in this trade or you're not in this trade and now it's going vertical so if you're in this trade if you just stuck with the plan now you're already at three to one Johnny, now you can take your money. Same line, by the way, Johnny. See it here? Time and an upsloping line now gives you more than three to one. Now you can take your money. With me? Definitely I want to break bad habits. Yes, sometimes it's very hard to master myself. I like getting fired. It helps me learn. That's what you're here for, okay? And, and I'll get through to you, trust me with repetition I'll get through to you okay so it's going vertical and I didn't by not sticking with my plan I'm not of course reaping the profits now let's pay attention to vertical how many times have you um, I'm gonna go back to what Amanda said I had the long I've nailed these swings all month long so Amanda said now you're looking and waiting for a short so Amanda says, you know, you're sitting back in the weeds waiting for the market for a short, right, Amanda? I'm even probably thinking of the, you know, 840 or $1,000 on a swing, and then it's probably time to start looking for a change of behavior, right? Well, I got my whole, oh, I didn't miss it, Amanda, I got $100. No, I, I, I screwed it up pretty bad, let's be honest. Okay, so you mentioned previously that just because it's three to one is not a good enough reason to fold. That's true. Since we expected elliptical and it's finally doing so, what should be a logical target? I'm gonna go back to the original. We're not quite there. So let's see what, what this would have been. Nikolai. There you go. 1100 bucks. You're either long here or you're long here. If you're still long, okay? And Nikolai, you're I was thinking double this this was a range right here, double this range. 
Okay. And we're getting fairly close to that. Let's go ahead and mark that out. go seems a bit high okay so that would be double the range all right and that'd be a nice profit 1100 bucks that'd be nice nice piece of change all right so it's uh 4 30 in the morning okay 1100 bucks. Bingo. That'd be worth getting up for. So let's cut this down to 100. Let's make it 90 because I don't want it. Okay, so now you can see that you would have taken your, maybe you would have taken your profit. Maybe you could have also, you know, put a profit stop under here. For the secondary entry, it was $200 less, so it would have been $900 there. But maybe, as it goes vertical, you want to put a profit stop here. Another way you can play this, right? Because look at the, this is inflection press is going vertical, then it stops and does a little dance. And in fact, here you get, look, price cluster, see it? This is inflection. All that coiled energy below there makes me think that this is just starting to run, says Matt. Well, hold on to that thought. So, a lot of money on the table. Move the stop closer. Okay, watch now. We go vertical. Um, I want you, to, instead of worrying about where profit stops would be, I want you to pay attention to action because this is a really important lesson. Let's go back to Amanda's words, which were an flat looking for an area to get short. How many of you have missed a move and then just thought, you know what, I'll just catch the next side. I missed the long, I'll just catch the short, right? So watch. You can see your profit target right here. Sorry, Tim, could you please explain what inflection means? I'm getting it right now, Robbie. So you can see your profit target. It's 1100 bucks. Right here would give you $1,000. Okay, so price went vertical, and then it does this little congestion, right? That's a inflection area. And the question is, it's like a tiny range. Is it going to break out to the upside or the downside of this? We don't know, right? Need to need to catch next week regardless of whether it's long or short and not anticipate. That's true, Gina. That's, that's, and the other thing, Gina, is moves go as far as they go. They don't go as far as you want them to go or as far as you think they're going to go, right? So watch these bars. So we're getting what's called an inflection point here. We went vertical, now we've paused. All right, take care, Kai. Now we're going vertical again. Yeah, and this one has a cluster as well. See it, price cluster? Now we've gone vertical again. And look at the separation. So just because we measured it off doesn't mean that the move is over, does it? So maybe we have, now maybe our radar is on and we're going, you know what, we're past $1,200, so somewhere up here price should be getting tired and we should be looking for horizontal and an entry. How many people, does that make sense to most of you? Amanda says, I agree. I got a couple, a couple other yeses. Makes sense. Okay, so let's see how that works out for us. Well, how about this? Closes on its high. Now we get a wide range bar, closes on its low with great separation. 
Sign of fresh sellers? Nikolai says, if it just went elliptical, I'm not sure I'd be in a hurry. So we've got, does this get anybody interested? Pat, Pat and BJ say, um, we're looking. Matt says, makes me go, hmm, interested, yes. Pull back or reversal, interested for a short. That's what I'm asking, Robbie. I'd like to see follow through. It's just one bar right now, says Scotty. Okay, not yet, says Aaron. Okay, Thomas says, yes. All right, so let's see what we get. Next bar is lower, but it does close out on its high. So we've got too many times I get reamed in this reversal, says Pete. I wait. Okay. Keep that thought. And if you were thinking that this was the turn, now you've got separation and a new high. So Robbie says, yeah, it's running out of energy around an area where we'd expect it to, I think. Okay, well, what do you think now, Robbie? Now it has separation and a new high. So it Pause. This is an inflection point. Vertical. Pause. New high. New high. Okay, how about this one? New high. This one's got a... Widest range since we went vertical and closes below the low of this bar back into this elliptical area. Starting to look tired. Rolling chop. Anybody see no stops, says Pete? Anybody see fresh sellers? Not really. Okay. No. Not yet. Looks like a frequency up is holding. Okay. Profit taking, says Scotty. Okay. New highs with separation. Now, just think if you, if I'd stuck with my original plan where I took my hundred bucks, I'd now be up almost two thousand. And I'd be on easy street. These bars are not hard to take, huh? This, I think the biggest trade in the run was 3500 bucks. but new highs. New highs with great separation. Robbie says that was an expensive profit stop. Yeah, I I I kept a hundred bucks to give away nineteen hundred. Yeah, is this traders entering short and getting stopped out? Probably. New highs. And 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 by the way, it's not even prime time New York yet. Separation. Is this market tired? So it makes a high but closes, opens and closes. So here we've got a close, a open, and a close at the same price. Made a high, closed on its low. Amanda says, I like that bar. So let's, let's review before we go any further. This is what we dream of. Parabolic, right? Enter in here. You can't even see my damn entry. Never, ever, ever went against me. Not one tick. Okay? Absolutely no reason to snug up risk here. Two to one was over here. We weren't there. There was no reason to do this. Just go to break even sit on your hands when it went you can see double the range it doubled the double see it how did you feel like shit that's how i felt amanda how about that i felt like i lost two thousand dollars so 
whoever said it, Nikolai Robbie said that it was an expensive profit stop. It was Robbie. I mean, yeah, I. It's only an opportunity, sure, Nikolai. But you know what? I very seldom, you very seldom. You you very sorry, seldom hear, and it's true. I very seldom attach any emotion to it. But I'll tell you what I felt about this was. That was the dumbest thing I've done in a long time. There just was no rhyme or reason to that. Did you need time to cool off before your next trade? Um, catch ships with gray beards. I did get a lot of raspberries. Yeah. Up here, when I woke up, they were like, hey, boss. Yeah. You would be looking for smart trading, and this was not it. Yeah, that's for sure. If you felt that bad, I've got plenty of, of, yeah, well, it's all relative. But it's some muscle memory carried over from the prior trades, right? I guess, Ouija, it's just, it's just bad. This is just bad trading. So let's see what this trade would have offered us. That's the unfortunate part. And you'd like, you'd like to catch these. So up to here, it's uh, 1800 bucks. Oh yeah, I I I know I'm not going to hit them all, but this is just so. I mean, never take one tick of heat. It's just if I just followed what I normally do, the routine I normally do with every trade. I wouldn't have put a profit stop in until right here. So. Hey, happens. Oh, nice to hear you get rattled after a bad decision. Very human. Okay. I'll, I'm glad we learned something about it. I, I would say the same thing I said earlier on. Be consistent in what you do. Okay, over and over and over again. Because otherwise you can't do an analysis. Yeah, Gina said you started out by saying traders need to be systematic. I was marketed by Commodities Corporation as their systematic discretionary trader. Okay. They sold me to Mitsubishi Heavy Industries for a tremendous amount of money. It, they bought a part of the company to get me as part of the part of their portfolio managing their money. Um, because discretionary traders that make money consistently are very rare. Um, so, did I like this bar? Yes, I did. So at this point, apparently, my ego is recovering. It's the next morning. My ego is recovering. I've slept on it. Um, I wasn't that happy when I woke up and saw all this. I did take some razzing by the gray beards, but, you know, we do have lots of money in the bank, so it's okay. So I watch it close on its high. Or, sorry, make a new high, but close on its low, and I've got price clustering going on again, right? And you, what's the first thing I do? Anybody tell me? What did I do? Nobody? Yeah, put in the noise. Right? It's a new high. It closes on its low. Put that noise in right away. Extend it out. Okay? So I'm trying to get you... This is something we didn't talk about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. So now I'm trying to give you another visual aid that will help you make decisions. It's right in front of your face, okay? Just throw the noise up there so that, you know, if this ends up being important. If it's not, you can just hit a race or move it off to the side and use it again, okay? I usually keep a go and a go sitting around and I keep... Um, uh, uh, an advanced multi-pivot line copied over here, a red and a blue one, and then I can just paste them on and move my stuff around, right? But the moment something happens, I'll put it on, extend it out, label it, and then I'm watching to see, because I like this bar, but it's going to take more than this bar, right? I'm not just going to put an entry in right now. I need to see something. But the bar, I'm looking at the bar going, okay, well, that's interesting. But I might have seen that, you know, here and then dumped it. I tell you, I, I wasn't, but 
This bar really made me sit up. All right, so let's see what happens. Okay. Take a look at this bar. Take a look at the nice, I guess it's not drawn in here. Take a look at our nice price clusters. See them? So we've got this nice price cluster. we got the spike hanging above it. And now we've got separation and follow through to the downside. So we've got two bars closing on their low. And let's just go back and ask this question. What are the positions at this point? Everybody but me is long and getting paid, right? There's lots of profits to be taken. There's lots of, that sounds dark, yeah. There's, well, remember, it can keep going up, though, Nick. There's, you know, Johnny says, I want to sell it bad. Johnny, I see you selling it here as well, though. You got, you know, make make sure that you, you know, you get what you want before you jump in. But, okay, so now we've got price clusters. We've got two bars that close on their low. All good. Now we've got three bars that close on their low. So separation, market's tired, separation with follow-through. Three bars that close on their lows. So what do I do? I put in a go no go. And where do I hang it? Top of the noise, right? Now, you don't have to be that aggressive. You can you you can do this if you want, right? But as aggressive as you can be is the noise, right? So that's what I can, that's the zone I can afford right there. See it? And you can decide as the bars unfold where you're willing to put your entry at that point. But now you have the visual of anywhere in there you can trade. So depending on how aggressive Let me finish the thought, and then I'll talk about targets. Depending on how aggressive you want to be as these bars unfold, and also what you think of the trade, that's the range anywhere in here that you can get short. Make sense? Okay. So now I did this. Uh, I did that. There we go. This is where price went vertical. See it? And this is that blow off phase where it just went nothing but vertical. So this is what I'm thinking. The people that have trade location are below here, right? The people that chase price are above here, right? That makes sense? These people aren't going to get rattled. I mean, they may watch it. They may start to take profits in here, but yeah. The chasers don't defend, they just die. But the people that are down here, a lot of them are actually going to go, well, this was fluff. When it pulls back to here, that's fine because my position is still in, you know, in the profit. I'm okay, right? 
So it's not until it starts to eat into this level that they start to dump. And this is where the big money has got to get rid of their position, right? Because it's, they've got their profits sitting in the table in a trade, right? So I'm thinking that the fun isn't even going to start until we get to here. What do you think of that idea? This is where people, you know, the airy fairy people started to get in. I think this is where the fun's going to start. So I'm going to take this high to the where the fun's going to start, and I'm going to double it. Ouija says this is the first target. I'm going to double this. I'm going to say if it breaks this, we're going to we're going to we're going to double this. At least, how about that? So let's see what that does for us. Let's see if that first problem area is enough for for you, Ouija. Just eyeballing it. So, okay, well, there's your 840 bucks right there. Pete says, if you were long, would you exit at your entrance? Do you mean what I do a stop and reverse, Pete? No? What do you mean? Do you mean if I was long and paying attention, is this a good place to get out? Yeah, I wish I had been that in tune with this trade. Um, when you saw this, probably the price clusters, this is probably a time to just pitch the trade. You might also do something like uh, some kind of maximum excursion line. Something like that. Gives you the same basic area, but um, you might have just had profit stops running in here. I don't do I don't do stop and reverses, Pete. Um, when you see the third low close bar, is it market exit? It should be Gina, if you're not out. Yeah. When you saw this it should be, you know what I that's enough, never mind. On a market order, yeah. I I would just say or draw a line in the sand. You know what? Maybe maybe you want to do this. Well, let me just take these. Maybe you want to grab this and just say, you know what? If it if it takes this area out by ten ticks. Give me my money. Nothing wrong with that, right? A profit stop. All good ideas. But protect at some point you gotta because you had two thousand dollars in this, so at some point you gotta start protecting profit. Whatever it is. The least aggressive would be a profit stop right underneath here. Ten ticks underneath here. Getting close to the bone on a reversal trade for a ma major trend move is a major rough area for me. All right, Pete, let me just say it again. Andrews was a stop and reverse trader, okay? And I don't think you've been around long enough to hear this story. And he used to call me Pansy. Now, I was a teenager. I was a young teenager, so I was an easy target. He's a short little guy, but he was, you know, in, in his 70s when I met him and died at 87. But he used to call me Pansy because I would I would never stop in reverse, and I told him if you give me your his his account was about two hundred and forty million dollars, I had a two thousand dollar account. I said you give me your account, I'll take your I'll take your account, you take my account, and we'll see who can stop in reverse. Um, you know, eventually he stopped calling me Pansy. I took his ideas and had to change them to fit the type of account I had. Okay, it's a lot easier to do stop and reverse if you have, you know, a couple hundred million dollars in the bank and you're trading pretty unleveraged. If you got a $2,000 account, you can't take a 40% hit on a trade just to do a stop and reverse. You just can't. You'll be dead after three trades, four trades. So I just have never been a stop and reverse guy, Pete. I'm I'm much more likely in out wait, cool off, clear your head, 
I'm not even interested in catching that next leg down. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But there's almost always a good amount of time in between. Amanda says, I like that. So would most of you characterize that's how I trade? I'm in, I'm out, then I cool off. Generally, I get out of the trading room for a while, do something else, and then come back later on. I, I'm not interested in that. I, I don't really care that I'm long here and let me get short now because it's going down. I This is a loser for me generally. So it's easier for me to take this short now because I didn't ride it up, Pete. In, out, woo, says Perry. So, so Pete, I would say slow down. It would be harder to master yourself with the reversals in and outs. I'm sure there are good reversal traders, Matt, but I, I can't actually point to any. How about that? Of all the traders I know, I can't actually point to one and say, okay, here's a here's a guy who's really good at stopping reverses. I can't. You definitely need to trade to suit your personality, and mine is, um, you know, I tried to trade emotionally level. Um, so somebody asked me, I think Amanda earlier on, did I walk away after this one? Luckily, Kevin was here, the IT guy here, was I, I was able to get um, involved doing something else, so it cooled me off right away. But, you know, if I... If I make a blunder, I, I generally take a day off, at least. Graybeards get taste of Chicago for lunch on the Master. Oh, oh yeah, they, Perry, they live like kings. And, well, there's one female, like kings and queens. Are you kidding me? All their food, they have a five-year contract, prepaid. They get a cut of the profits. They own the brokerage house. I don't, so they get $7.50 a round turn from me. Imagine all the money from that is that they split. Michael runs the place. I don't. And I pay for all their food. I, I bought the house that they live in. And now they have a house in Chicago, in London. We're looking for one in the Far East. It's a, it's a, it's a good job if you can get it. But by the same token... When I'm trading, they have to be there. And these are people that, you know, have been with me at least 15 years. So, um, most of them, any vacancies, there you go. Uh, most of them have, have uh, foregone, I really think this is the right way to say it. Most of them have foregone, like me, have foregone retiring to do this that's that's why we have so many you know because only only two have to be watching the markets at any one time we have so many because none of us are 25 years old anymore we can't work 40 hours at a time yeah I know there's lots of people that would like it but um, I don't even do hirings anymore the the last person we hired was the head of J.P. Morgan's uh, New York operations, the floor guy, J.P. Morgan, had always been an adversary for more than 20 years. So, <coughs> Petra says, "Me, I never want to retire. I will work till the day I die. I guarantee you, I'll be tra They'll be dragging me out. They'll call the ambulance. They'll be dragging me out of the bad cave, Petra. Well, you need a few more years, Johnny." Who knows? There, there may be. You'll be dead by then? Oh, don't say that. Pete says, me too. I'm on my third retirement. Johnny, uh, 60 is the new uh, new 30, is what I heard. We're supposed to live to 120 or 130 now. So, just remember, my mom's 96, and she was teaching kindergarten until she was 93. She still drives. Runs her own house. So, don't give up, dude. She looks phenomenal. I'll tell you what, she looks ph phenomenal. I'm going to spend, after I spend a week with you guys, I'm not going to see her beforehand, but I'm going to then go spend two days with her and then fly back. So, Kevin's going to pack everything up, including all my clothes. I'm going to take a 
overnight and go see her for two days and then jump on a plane. So anyway, um, so all right, so let's go back to what we're doing. Ouija's observation that maybe this is not a bad place to lock in profit. Yeah, hey, this is 880 bucks. So this was the average swing, right? Good. I, I, I didn't think of it that way, Ouija. I thought it would accelerate, but um, this was certainly a nice place to just say, you know, if it comes back to this base where it took off, let me just take my do and do re mi, right? All right, so let's see how this, I'm not even filled yet though, Weege, but let, let's see how this gets, let's see if we can get a fill. Nice catch as usual, Weege, says Matt. All right, so let's see if we can get filled first. So, I mean, I think we got two lots off here. Not very exciting. Now we've got new price clusters, see them? So we are not filled. And I'm a little concerned that if price takes out these price clusters to the downside, that we're not going to see anything up in here anymore. Like I said, we've got two contracts on. The good news is we got two contracts on. The bad news is we're about 20,000 contracts short. So, And now I can draw in a line of maximum excursion. And it's downsloping. Well, take a look. This is where my entry was. I like this trade, so I want to price above the tops, above the price cluster. I don't like this anywhere near as entering in this area, but I have a sinking feeling that we're about to take out these price clusters and be gone to the downside. Follow me? I think the train is leaving the station. Now, I could be dead wrong. The market gives you what it gives you. Yeah. Trading the coil highs as a shoulder. Yeah. So this is the shoulder here. And we do manage to get a fair bit off at the shoulder. We still don't get the whole shot off, by the way. So is the cluster considered a structure? So this is the shoulder right here. But... I don't like this anywhere near as well as I did with a stop up here, obviously, right? Now, I could have solved it by using a 30-point stop. The iceberg orders are flowing, yeah. So, you can see, like I said, we don't have anywhere in. Hey, Timmy. So we don't have anywhere near enough on, but we get in what we get in. And we don't have half the fund in right now, but that's okay. So it slows down a little bit. It's pulling back, and we get a bit of a, rep a reprieve here and manage to get in more. And at this point, I'm now feeling better about this being a stop because we've had our thrust down and this we should just be pulling back at most to our line of maximum excursion. But by the same token, again, I'd much rather be entering here with a stop above what would be C, right? So we actually come up right to our line of maximum excursion. See it? Now we get everything we want. We get the full boat in. So we got two thousand or two contracts here. We managed to get about half the half the group in at this point, and then managed to sell everything we wanted to here and in the cash market. Finally, at this point, 
but I'm not that wild about this is not the type of structure that I like but the line of maximum excursion is of course doing what it is supposed to do so another look by the way at let's see how this works there we go so this is our you might remember we had this big stall down here and this was our entire vertical run up remember that so I measured this and you'll see where I hang that in a minute so I measure that length and you'll see where I hang that in a minute just another way to check for a profit target so price is building a shelf and I'm really kind of thinking about this in terms of this line of maximum excursion right here and this shelf as the bottom and I'd like to have this taken out not this line of maximum excursion I really don't want to revisit the area where I was selling again I really don't not not I'm uh, okay I'm not going to make the mistake that I made before which means I'm not going to change my plan I'll go to break it do you need me there oh, okay um, here he's right here Hobbs hi buddy here he's right here we have a, we have a visit by Hobbs bye Hobbs um, I'm not going to change my plan. I'm going to wait for it to go to two to one at least before I go to breakthrough. And initially, what I'd really like it to do is start to go vertical before I go to break even and start to then move things. I've got a target to the downside, right? So, but I, what I don't, I would prefer that we don't see this area again. So let's see what we get. Of course, we get right back up there, get to the line of maximum excursion. I could have held off on the execution. <sighs> Maddening. So let's uh, squeeze back in a little bit. In point of fact, I never would have gotten anything off here. I mean, just the two contracts. Yeah, it looks horizontal and. I don't want it to take this shelf out. I want it to take out the bottom, right? Does that make sense? But you get what you get. Now, you can do this if you want. Uh, wrong color, but this is optional. Now, if you want to protect yourself, you can lower I'm expecting a, an elliptical move now okay this is circular now I'm expecting an elliptical move now if you want to you can lower your risk especially because you didn't get in where you wanted to get in right so now maybe you don't want to risk you're still above C see it So maybe you want to cut down your risk. I did not, but maybe you want to. You're just lowering your risk. Yes, because the shelf was broken, it's gone elliptical. So if it comes back up now, you don't want it to make a new high, Pete. So if you're trading a smaller account, Pete, if it's gone, if it's broken the shelf and it looks like it's gone elliptical, you don't want to you don't want to sit through a new high. You want to get taken out. This is like two ticks above a new high just take me out shoot me right so you'll be risking the noise plus two ticks and especially now now it, it should be gone now does that make sense and 
and we leave a new low test it test it test it we're pulling back and I'll take a look at this what did we say the average pullback was four hundred seven bucks yeah the average move is 850 but we should expect to eat 500 to 550 this is 407 bucks so it's not um, something unexpected now the good news is it's not killing us but it's irksome and actually now we have the moment this bar prints, we have this. For those of you that want to keep track in terms of a median line, it looks like this. And in fact, if you want to try a median line entry, you can. But as I said, if you go back and take a look at all the tapes from June, there are very few median line entries because every time you pick a C you get this kind of movement away from it. It just hasn't been that kind of market unfortunately. So it's trading with market structure or not being able to trade. It's just the way it's been. So now we've gone through the base on the low. We've zoomed the median line. We're pulling back to the median line. Okay, so now we're, this is where, anybody remember where this is? This is where we went vertical. Below here is all the safe money, right? And this happens to be, Ouija, this, what you said actually makes a lot of sense now that I look at it this way, because it's also the lower parallel, so this would have been 850 bucks at the place it went vertical and the lower parallel probably not a stupid idea you know, in terms of taking your money at a high probability area this is probably pretty nice if you didn't want to press you certainly if it takes this out you're gonna have to move down but nice catch Ouija and look look at the way the two came together so now we're breaking through I mean, at this point, you got to have a stop up here. Not what I wanted. Come with me. There we go. Make sense? Now you can go to break even. Now you can move to a profit stop. Or you can take your profits, by the way. You'd hate having your stop so far away. Then you should, then, Gina, then take the money right there. Take the $850 and say that's my average swing. It's right at the lower parallel. It's right where it went vertical. Yeah, I love making $850 a contract. That's a lot of money. Is that a character flaw? No. I think that's character strength. We've talked about that all last month, I, not May because I took May off, but all of June and also the prior month. If you have a smaller account or you're still trying to be consistently profitable, you should be taking your money at logical areas. This is about as logical as it gets. Um, were you looking for an elliptical move to the downside, which is more than 840 because the previous move was elliptical too and it's an elliptical phase? No, it's more this, Ouija. We had $850 of congestion followed by the same size but totally vertical. So my thoughts were that second phase. Okay, Amanda, I'll, you take care. Have a long weekend. Um, that second phase, that run-up, was people with bad trade location chasing
price and it was likely it did now it now didn't trade the way I thought it would it, I figured if it turned it would collapse quickly pay attention to what we're doing Johnny I figured it would collapse quickly get to this shelf and if we broke through the shelf of course then everybody that's sitting on the longs that they say have been sitting on for more than a day would start to pitch them out and we'd get double the range in fact what we got was really kind of a circular move until we got down to this area but Gina taking profits here that's not a character flaw this is taking profits at a very logical area and if you did that every time you'd be doing very well it does look like there was no one there doesn't it and why would there be no one there to buy Ouija because they're all long so that part of the assumption was correct everybody's long the people that had tr bad trade location all took losses so they can't rebuy the people that have good trade locations are only now getting stopped out so there's no buyers here which is why I thought it might double the range so let's see how this plays out but Gina if you took profit there every time that's a beautiful thing alright and then not worried about the rest of the move so we continue to make new lows I throw out a warning line now I'm only marginal on this median line but I'm looking for something with some frequency I really don't have anything so I put the warning lines out there as Andrews did um, just because they do have mathematical validity but at this point this median line really hasn't done that much for us it just certainly didn't give us an entry it did a good job when it got through the median line the median line held price same thing here on the lower parallel when we zoom through it it's held price so it's it's giving us some frequency now but it didn't give us any entries so it was a bit disappointing there it's now it's some reference yeah so as we pull back up again you can see it's trying to get above the upper parallel or the lower parallel and failing so we're boxing in price and you could have stops all the way down here Gina if you were following this if you want every time you broke through a box you could just jam it on down I didn't show it but oh there we are so when we get a close finally through this box now I'm gonna make sure I lock in profits make sense and I've got a target I've got I've showed you two possible targets two different ways to measure double ranges right and then also we've got frequency from the median line so now we're through the warning line and accelerating and you can see the warning line as we come back to try and test it is working well can you see it you see it come back and test the upper parallel or lower parallel and work now it's gotten through the warning line comes back and tests it and it works and then it accelerates each time so it the median line is showing us frequency it's just unfortunate it didn't give us an entry so sometimes you have to combine meeting lines that don't give you entries along with structural entries to help you with targets okay now here's double that range right here which by the way coincides with the second warning line so if you want that done thank you and that's a lot of money we'll go back and look in a minute so this second warning line hit double the range now let's watch and see another there's another possible exit here 
That's a beautiful exit, by the way. Okay, now we're through the warning line. So we're through that second warning line. See it? Now, remember, every time we've gone through one of these lines, we've come back and tested it and been unable to break back in, right? So that's repeatable behavior, correct? So if repeatable behavior changes, that's your clue that the market is changing as well, right? Make sense? Okay, so we're accelerating to the downside, making new lows. Then we get a head standard. So we put out our advanced multi-pivot line, see it? Doesn't mean anything yet. But every time we've come through one of these lines, when we come back and test it, it's held and we've gone lower. So we've got basically a very small, look, it's only about 10 pips wide. This is either going to hold and blow through the bottom or this is going to be an important line. So price doesn't seem vertical strangely because everyone was long. It's just bleeding. Well, that's exactly right. People are slowly getting bled to death, Ouija, to the point where all the longs are finally gone. So now watch. We're back inside this warning line. This is the first time that we've broken back inside a line since 61 and change. So, potential bottom. Now, if you wanted, you, you could certainly just take your money here. You could put a profit stop above here. If you didn't take your money, you should be thinking this. Watch this happen now. You watched it pull back. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It pulled back just about 500 bucks, which is, of course, our average pullback, right? But you got to know this game is pretty near over because not only did the second warning line not hold, it actually went into the first warning line. So this whole thing has changed. It's really broadened out now. So right as you get down to this prior low, two-dimensional, take your money. And note, I didn't wait for the last tick. I took it in advance, right? If not, you've got to have a profit stop up here. Robbie says, is this a good telltale sign that the mass of the market may be shifting? I think this is a telltale. When this happens, Robbie, this tells me that everybody that had to sell has sold. And now there are some people that actually got some money out of this market or have been out long enough that they can start to sniff and start to by the market. It's be, it's gone from two-way to one. I'll show you where the yellow range is in a second, Aaron. So this is purely based on the warning lines. We've gone through the warning line. Now we've gone back through two warning lines. As it comes back down to the second warning line and horizontal, just give me my money. Looks like price cluster and poke through the door and then run out to the upside. So You've got to have a profit stop up here if you're still hanging around. So if you want to know where that comes in, let's just go over the overall range. You can see that kind of split the difference. So 
here's where we went vertical to the downside. Can you see it? We kind of seesawed, then we went vertical. I just took this long vertical move and just added it on to that. It's a little arbitrary, but it just you're just looking for something to give you a general area. And you can see they all kind of gave you, you know, plus or minus 30, 40 cents in the grand scheme of things. It, you know, it wasn't going to make or break the trade. But so let's see what this does for us. This trade. Um, we're going to measure from here because we didn't get, we only got two contracts off at the original one. So this trade over here gave us exactly three to one Ouija. Down to here, of course, it gave us $1,800. And if we got out at the second time we were at that second warning line, we got a little over two thousand dollars. If we got out this double, about eighteen hundred dollars. So any way you look at it, it was between eighteen hundred and two thousand. We're basically done, David. Have a good weekend. Can I say the yellow is a measurement of the elliptical amount of energy in this market? You can say that. That's exactly what this is. So the elliptical. This is a lot of people will get this on the replay. This is circular 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 really until here then price goes we're going to measure this ellipse right uh, I don't know how the hell to move that correctly I guess you have to do it like uh, I'll try it one more time and that's not it either. Okay. I'm going to have to practice with this ellipse tool. That's pretty close. Now I can see the... That's basically it. Alright, so there's the ellipse where price went vertical to the upside. See it? One second. And then this would be, well, this would be, I'll never grab this again, will I? Nope, I won't. Let's try it. for me here. There we go. All right. Hopefully I get this right. There we go. And then this would be the ellipse to the downside. And if you think about this, guys, I know you're typing, but you know what? It's hard for me to do this. You think about this. This is the ellipse in a, in a channel sense, okay? The measurement of energy from the ellipse, okay? All right. So it's a spiral, sure. Okay, as an uh, okay, so um, eight to one says Matt. As an aside, is there a story behind the way crude is moving of late? No, I have no comment, Timmy. Think about it. I think you missed the earlier questions about uh, about Greece and about um, what was the other question? I, I I just can't talk about things right now. Oh, Greece and China. So if I'm if I'm uh, part of something or or part of a committee, I just can't comment. Anyway, um, had to trade during breakfast of the master class, and because monthly news volatility, I need the money. Was only in the market 30 minutes during the class. Paying attention to trading, and we'll also review the video again later. Okay, no, that's cool. I'm just saying, um, 
do me a favor, Johnny. When you're trading and you're talking about what you're doing in the markets, it's distracting to me. Okay? So, I know you're trying to give me feedback that you're doing well or you're doing poorly, but I'm trying to keep attention to what, I, you know, I have an agenda of what I want to teach you guys. So, um... All right, so questions? Those of you that are left? We still have a lot of people left, actually. We're ba we're done, Gina. I'm just asking if there's questions. All right, so anybody that still has uh, open questions about Chicago, drop me an email, please. Could say something about inflection, please. Sure. So inflections are when we go vertical, we tend to have small ranges where price just stops and pauses and catches its breath and then it'll go continue to go vertical right sometimes it reverse sure you have to watch and see I mean obviously up here it reversed you have to watch and see whether or not it's just inflection or whether it's actually a reversal that's all um, Never got the question email on jacket size. I will, you know what? Oh, yeah, you need to make hotel reservations, guys. Um, I'm doing my flight today. Um, so I will, I think I'll probably post, I think, you know what? I think we'll start a Google group for people that are going to Chicago. We're right at, for, by the way, I did some research on this. We're right about at the sweet spot. We're starting the sweet spot spot of flights. It's six to eight weeks in advance, just so you know. So that's why I'm going to not lock mine in right now. So, But that's just me. But I don't know. What do I know? I don't know anything about airline prices. I just read several articles. That's all. Anyway, hope you guys, uh, I got a good lesson from that first trade as well. Good. I Like I said, that I wish I had just followed my plan. Um and maybe that'll hit home with a lot of you. Do we need restaurant reservations? No, we have, Dawn is gonna take care of all that, Pete. Um, there's gonna be, um, as we get closer, I mean, you guys will have to decide where you're gonna eat and all that stuff, but Dawn is gonna help be, she's gonna be the social secretary. Scotty's gonna be my right-hand man at the scene. Kevin's gonna be the IT guy that takes care of anything. We don't have to do any of that stuff. Shake Shack, there you go. Um, but, uh, you know, several people have stepped up and said that they will, you know, Scotty's going to just make sure that I'm at where I am supposed to be. Well, okay, so there's a good question. Should we bring computers with charting software? Um, always a good idea. Um, I, okay, Gina, did you get the information about reservations for the hotel? Okay, so I w here's what I would do if I were you. I, I would expect everybody's bringing a laptop. Um, you're traveling without a computer. Can't stand laptops. Okay, that's cool. All right, so if you're taking a laptop, Timmy, you can always sit next to somebody else with a laptop. If you're taking a laptop, I would get a hold of the hotel and say, I'm going to be at Tim Morge's thing or Market Geometry's thing, and I bring in a laptop. Um, are there plugins underneath each table? And do I need a cord? You know, do I need an uh, extension cord? And you guys can probably sh sh share a gang extension cord. Kevin and I are going to work with them to make sure that Internet is okay. You're going to be done work on the overhead or PowerPoint screen thing. Yep, I'm going to do a, power, a screen thing. Yep, right. So you can just watch off the screen. But some people want, you know, um, you might want to look at a screen in front of yourself as well. I, it's up to you. Um, on Wednesday and Thursday, you have the opportunity on your laptop to actually chart along with me and say, hey, instead of charting that, why don't we chart, you know, pick a stock or pick an instrument. So um, we might not, have, probably not a blackboard, but I'll probably have a whiteboard, Peter. That You know, that's fine. Not using a computer is fine with me. So... Um, if you're going to bring a laptop, you want to think about power, and the best thing to do is ask the, ask the uh, just just the same people we made reservations with, 
they're actually not the front reservation group. They're a special group that just take care of us. Just go right back to the address and say, I'm bringing a laptop and I'm going to be in class five days, three hours at a shot. Um, you know, is, our, is there someplace I can draw power from? Okay. We're going to try and help you guys get good internet for those of you that want feed. Um, Kevin and I can do some stuff about that. It's not much we can do about electricity. So, all right. So, but if anybody else can think of any other questions, those are great questions. So, all right. Go forth. It's today's Friday, right? Go forth and enjoy your weekend. I will see you on Monday. And uh, thank you all for the nice time off. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, somebody wanted somebody wanted us a, a tape to stay up. Don't forget to email Wendy and me. June 18th, 19th, I think it was, and say, hey, please leave that up. Oh yeah, the beards are going to have a, f a good time. They will not be there, and we won't be trading live. I will be flat at that point. Or I will only have long-term positions, so they'll be watching the long-term positions um, with discretion. And I think actually that week, um, 10 out of the 13 are going to London on a major trip on the Queen to go visit, uh, see the new digs, see the castle, see the grandsons, see the great, see, see uh, Charlotte and George, and uh, break in the new trading room there, and then uh, a couple of them, Michael and another one, are going from there to uh, several places in the Far East to take a look at properties that we might open a third office and we're talk we're talking about it I'm, I don't know if we're going to do that or just uh, continue to do it out of Chicago but we'll see so anyway <laughs> I don't own any grass Jenny that I don't own this company I, I I I put up all the money and then I gave it to them I don't have anything I literally don't I don't know anything with the CME I do know they'll get back to us when they know more um, and my guess, Perry, is that we're not going to know anything more till September 1st. But in about two weeks, I'm actually going to order everybody's jackets. So if you, have, if you haven't heard from me in two weeks, you, somebody might want to remind me to double-check everybody's jacket size and also the badge you're going to use. I would suggest you, if you want, if you want your badge number to actually be registered with the Mercantile Exchange, four letters or less I would suggest four but four or less if it goes more than five it's not an official badge okay Pete says any guess on the future value of NYMEX and CMA seats after the floors are closed um, I'm, I have no plan of selling mine Pete I think it's like owning stock at this point. So, do you want me or somebody else to do a spreadsheet build for the jackets like Mark had? Oh, that'd be nice, man, if, you, if you're willing to do it. Matt, if you want to be the, the man. Um, if you start out by grabbing everybody on the Google groups that said they're going, I'll add to that with people that have since come forward. How about that? Pete, you're going, right? Are you still here, Pete? I don't even know if Pete's still here. Um, you're, you're going, right? So we're going to need, you don't have to tell me today, but we're going to need your jacket size. So, and you know floor jackets, so. Yeah, Matt, I'll have to put together what I have. I have to add what's happened in the last two days. There's been a ton of activity in the last two days, and we'll have to get to those people and get jacket sizes. We'll have to get Pete's jacket sizes. Um, I'm also uh, offering um, jacket sizes. Uh, you know, uh, Ed and Holly, who build our websites, as well as Kevin, our IT guy, um, I'm offering uh, to buy jackets 
Mark Geometry is going to buy jackets for their children. 46 regular mat is Pete's. Um, any idea of the number? We're we're gonna ma we're gonna max it at 45 Timmy, and I think we'll probably I, we're not maxed yet, but we're we'll probably we'll get there. There's 15 people from outside of Market Geometry. Um, that just happens to be the size of the room. That's why we're gonna do it, Tim. Um, that want to come and they'll join if we let them come. But so far, I haven't let them at the door. I'd rather let the Market Geometry people fill this place up first. Um, but Timmy, remember this: some people are coming just for the first part, some people are coming just for the second part, and then some people are coming for both. So I don't expect that. Do these people have any background? Yeah, actually, most of these people, Jorge, are either prior members or they've been following on the email list for years. So, I mean, they were eager the moment we even hinted that we were doing it at IB eight, nine months ago, but yeah. Arrive early to get a front seat. Everybody will have a good view, Timmy. Kevin's taking a look at what, they're desi what they've designed, and everybody will have a good view. Don't worry about it. Yeah, this took forever to put together, didn't it? So, but now it's going to happen quick. We'll be in Chicago before you know it. So, anyway, all right. Have a good Friday. I'm going to go uh, get a snack. Um, all little talk. Have you seen? Uh, I don't. Uh, Pete, could you repeat that? I'm not really sure what you're asking me. Oh, the lower shoulders in Apple. Yeah, you you're not in evening with the master, are you? Me short. Well, you, Johnny, I'll hold a spot for you. How about that? Anyway, everybody, take care. Have a nice long weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Hey, Nicholas, uh, Nicholas, you got my answer about mentoring, right? I thought you were here today. Okay, so you just tell me what you need. I'll take care of it for you. Okay, all right, everybody, take care. Um, I will see you on Monday. Have a nice long weekend. It's fine to do some practice, but don't forget balance. Take some time off as well, guys. Uh, I'll see you all. I'm going in the evenings after Chicago. Cool. Good, Pete. Oh, okay. You did already, Nick. It'll take me a while to catch up to my email. All right. Everybody take care. I'll see you all uh, later. I'll see you on Monday. Yeah, there you go.